these are my three best recommended pizza recipes you must try at home. You will become obsessed. You need to make these recipes because these pizzas <laughs> are gonna bring so much happiness into your life. The number one pizza is Johnny's Pizza, the world champion pizza chef, Johnny Di Francesco from Gradi, Melbourne. He makes, he shows you how to make the Napolitan pizza dough like a champion. So watch this video and become a pizza champion. Today, the master of pizza is going to show us how to make pizza Napolitana, Napolitan pizza dough from scratch. A lot of people think that it's difficult making Napolitan pizza dough, but it's actually not that hard if you follow the correct fundamentals. So really simple, this recipe is 600 mils of water, one kilo of flour, 30 grams of salt, and around about one to two grams of yeast. So what do we do first? We start off with the water. Very important, we always start off with the water, add the salt, and at this point what we do is we need to dissolve. And what we do is we add around about 10%. Now, a lot of people say, oh, how am I gonna measure 10%? Well, you can actually either weigh it or just um, have a consistency of like, let's say, a crepe or pancake mix, right? We get it to this consistency, we then get the yeast, as we can see, oh. very little yeast. Oh, wow. And what we do is we place the yeast directly into the mix. Is that fresh yeast? Fresh yeast, yep. Wow. So this will dissolve in a matter of seconds. There we go, all gone. Now, once we've achieved this, what we then do is we'll proceed to add the remaining of the flour. Now, only a little bit at a time, okay? Because you want the flour to absorb all that water. So a little bit at a time, we add, we keep mixing. I'm trying to keep my bowl really clean along the, uh, the perimeter. So that way I don't have any flour stuck there or any unused flour. We don't we want to use up all of it. So always mixing along the sides and just folding into the dough. Only using one hand. We don't want to use two hands at the moment because I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually turn this onto the bench so then I can get some real pressure into it with two hands. Okay, now as we can see the dough has formed, which is great because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this onto the table and this is where the work begins. So what we want to do is now with two of our hands we're mixing always into the flour. As you can see I'm pushing in and then I'm turning over. Now there's a few different ways that you can mix uh, the dough okay. This is one way so two hands just turning okay so we're just aerating and turning that dough. The other way is we can also push down and then when it comes to a nice long piece, I then turn over again. Have a look at this dough. Look how it's coming out. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Now, how do we know when the dough is ready? A couple of different ways. We can either make our dough into a nice ball. We press down. If it pops back up, that generally tells you that the dough is ready. Although the best way to tell whether the dough is ready or not is by getting a thermometer, placing it into the core of the dough, and if you're between 23 and 26 degrees, you're ready to set aside. This is what I'm talking about when you actually know that your dough is correct. Sorry, Vincenzo. I'm right. And now what we need to do is we need to place our dough um, aside to rest but what we need to do is cover it with a damp cloth because it's really important that we keep the dough hydrated if I leave it uncovered what will happen it will form a skin over the top we want to keep it hydrated so we're going to cover it with a damp cloth okay after two hours of allowing the dough to rest on the bench we then come back to it and what we do is we make our dough portions now remember guys it's extremely important to allow your dough to rest for at least two hours before you go off and cut your dough into dough portions, okay? So we've now kept it for two hours. We're going to now proceed to making our dough balls. Now there's a couple of things that you can do, okay? So first, what you can do is you can place them into a tightly sealed container and let them rest um, uh, overnight in an ambient temperature. I prefer that. I prefer not using refrigeration. Um, it's really important that if you get that um, technique perfect, you're gonna make always the best pizza that you've ever had. Now, 
If you do want to use refrigeration, here's a bit of a tip. When you've got them put into your sealed container, or your tightly sealed container in dough portions, what you need to do is you need to allow the dough to rise nearly double in size. So you will then place that into the fridge. The reason why we do that is the yeast becomes dormant, okay? But what doesn't stop is the maturity of the dough, which is extremely important. Now, we can't put an undeveloped dough in the fridge because your dough will continue to mature, but it will not rise correctly, okay? So if you keep it out into an ambient temperature, just bear in mind at a temperature of anywhere between 16 and 18 degrees. You will have a perfect rise uh, time over 24 hours, but you'll also have the yeast work extremely well and your dough will also mature at the same time. This is the secret. You need those two processes to work at the same time. I've also got a little tip and trick for those of you who have never made dough ball before. I'm gonna show you how you can learn on the spot. So normally what we do is we make our dough balls anywhere between 220 and 250 grams to make Neapolitan pizza. Okay, after 24 hours, the result is a nicely risen dough, okay? Now, if it's made correctly, you'll have a nice bounce in the dough. Very, very, the structure is very, very uh, well uh, maintained. And from here, what we do is we need to go and stretch our pizza to make our pizza napoletana. Put a little bit of flour on the bench so it doesn't stick, guys. So first step, we start an inch in from the bottom and we work our way to an inch from the top. So using our fingers, an inch in, we press down and we stop. We then place our dough ball the opposite way, an inch in again, we press down and we stop. Again, one more time, an inch in from the bottom, we press down and we stop. So we place our hand, so our right hand, one inch in again, not on the condizione, but one inch in. With our other hand, what we do is we crimp. So with these two, three fingers on the bottom, these two fingers, one over that finger and one over the small finger. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch. Then what we do is we come over to our forearm and hold it there. Hold it at your forearm and then flip back over. When you get faster, this is the technique that you will eventually end up learning how to do. The reason why I ask you to do it that way is so that it becomes a muscle memory. Because when you're doing it faster, what you're doing is you're actually flipping or you're flicking the dough to your forearm. So by you pretty much memorizing that technique, stretch over back, stretch over back, what happens is it becomes a natural uh, movement. As you can see, one part of the pizza is cooking. Now, very important, a lot, of, a lot of people make the biggest mistake is they get the pizza or they go like that. The best way is from the side. And also, when you want to turn your pizza, you always bring it out. You then turn it here in front and you place it back where you're cooking. Never turn the pizza inside the oven because what you're doing is you're picking up any ash. You want to reduce as much ash as, prop as possible. So, keep the pizza nice and clean on the bottom. The other thing is you can see I'm not lifting my pizza up in the air all the time because it's really important uh, to, to have that natural cook on the base, on the top, from the flame, right? Very, very important. That's what makes a good pizza napoletana. We don't want to pick up the pizza and cook in the air on the, um, next to the flame, right? Because we call that pizza bampata. Pizza La Regina. Let's eat. Have a look at the cell structure within the dough. Okay, this indicates the pizza napoletana has been cooked perfectly. We still have that beautiful softness, little bit of crispiness, the bounce back, which is important. The dough is bouncing back, which means the pizza has been cooked correctly. Vincenzo, I'm starving. Dai, let's eat some pizza, yeah.
the, we need to we need to make people understand also how do we eat pizza oh, napoletana? napoletana right allora there's two ways yes one we fold the two ends and we fold that part in and we the eat pocket to our version the other way the most traditional way oh wow and we fold it in like this you do, you need to be an engineer to bravo mmm <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Very light though. Beautiful mm. flavor. Beautiful. The fresh mozzarella mm. takes the pizza to the next level. Second pizza, it's a Roman pizza called Pizza Impala. A Roman pizza. My friend Marco is a great pizza chef. He uses big guy. He uses a very different way of making the dough. Very different to Napolitan. But it's beautiful because the edges are crunchy, but it's soft. Um, and it's a long, long pizza, so more friends can share it, you know, and it's just cooking a different way. You can do it in your normal oven. So watch this video and learn. Yay! Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate. Oh yes, with Marco's Plate. So let's get it started. We start from the biga. What is the biga actually? Vince, the biga is a preferment, is a starter, is a natural starter. So we're gonna use our flour, our ciabatta romana, which is a premix studied by Le Cinque Stagioni to have the perfect recipe for the pizza in pala la romana. Okay, let's start with one and a half kilo of flour mix, 900 milliliters of water and 10 grams of dry yeast. So let's start to put together the yeast. And slowly, slowly, we add the water. Basically, the biga, as a preferment, and as I say, the pizza impala is like more close to the bread. It's actually close to the ciabatta, because it will, it will be thick. So, biga is a preferment and comes from the world of the baker. That's why I'm using that. And actually, because biga is a kind of preferment which makes your dough much healthier gonna develop more taste, more smell, more volume as well. That's the secret of the, of the bakers. They, go, they use a preferment such as a biga or polish to develop more volume on the bread. What the bakers, what they do, they produce the preferment the day before and then they stock it for the following day because then on the following day they have no time to do all the process. So they just use the preferment, they finish the dough and then they need to go straight away into the oven. So there are multiple positive things about a biga. It's develop much more taste and smell. Eating like is a kind of umami. It's gonna have much more hair inside our dough and will be much more healthy for us to digest, easy to digest. Because a part of the complex sugar on the dough will be already gone because we already create a starter. So tomorrow we just need to split the last sugar, the complex sugar on the new flour and that's it. And my biga is ready. And then we stock it in the fridge. We let our biga rest for 24 hours on a deep container in the cool room with enough space to prove. That's the kind of bucket I usually use, a high one, and that's the biga following day. You cannot smelling. It's so strong. And now let's see how the gluten is made. And that's our gluten developed on the biga. We're going to use a spiral mixer. At home we can use a normal stand mixer, just use the foil instead of the hook. In this recipe there is a 9% of water, roughly the 80%. We can even reach the 90%. So if we have to do it by hand, it takes a while because you need to stop it, incorporate a bit of water slowly, slowly, keep mixing, then stop it again. Otherwise, the dough becomes like a glue. So on the second step, I'm gonna add a touch of wholemeal flour. So in this case, 500 grams. So we got one and a half kilo flour there on the bigger and 500 grams now. We're gonna add 640 milliliter of water, two grams of dry yeast and 20 grams of salt per kilo total. So in this case, we're gonna have 40 grams. So let's start from the wholemeal flour on our mixer. We had the yeast. I'm, I'm adding the bigger now. I'm just gonna add a bit of water now. Not gonna add all of the water. I'm just adding a tiny bit at the beginning and then half of that on the way while mixing. And we had as well 
the 40 grams of rock salt. So we just let the mixer start. Now it will be a long process because we have to reach the 80% of water. So this one is the hardest part because you need to wait, you need to be you need to add the last half of the water slowly, slowly. You don't have to rush and put the whole water together. You need to wait until the dough slowly, slowly incorporates the water. So slowly, slowly now there is no more flour around the bowl. So we just add a tiny bit of water slowly, slowly. You see, I'm not gonna give a lot all the water at the same time, but slowly, slowly I add a bit of water. Okay, now I just add all the water. We just double check the temperature. All right, we got 24 degrees. I'm just gonna finish with uh, a touch of extra virgin olive oil, 40 grams. And then once the dough will absorb the last 40 grams of oil, we just take it out. So you see the dough is ready. It's really nice and soft. Elastic. Elastic. I like that. Now what I do, I just wet my hand with a bit of water and I do like the bakers, slowly, slowly I take out and I put it in a, hot, a deep container. And how long do we have to rest now this dough? The dough rests for one hour. So what's happening now, Marco? So now after one hour, as we say, the dough is proofed, is twice, and now we're gonna do the final shape before the last proofing. So that's and how you tell when it's ready, exactly. when it grows. Oh, so you need to mark it all the time. Exactly. Wow. I, I okay. got a, a sign where, like from there, I need to wait until it's double. Okay, that's a good technique to use. Now we throw it on the flour, because we want to cut and shape. And what flour do we use? I got a semolina rimacinata, so it's a meal twice. It's very thin, it's not so, so thick as a normal durum semolina. Okay, it's time now to cut and shape. To cut, I'm gonna use this big scissor, which is my friend. It's very easy with a big scissor to cut it. You see, just pick it up and cut. And wait some balls of 600 grams for a roughly an half meter pizza. You can play a bit with the weight of the dough. Depends on how thick you want. If you want a thin, and crispy, you need to add less. If you want more thick, you need to increase the weight of the bowl. Uh, I personally recommend uh, 600 grams for the half meter, let's say, it's between 600 and 650, and uh, one kilo, 1.2 for the meter one. Okay, now we move into a bit of flour. Just put it on the semolina, and now what we do, we just bend it inside like this to give a round shape then we turn it upside down and we adjust here we oh, go like a mozzarella oh no pretty it's much like, like a, a bread it's like a, fo a focaccia bread it's not gonna be perfectly round but it's going to be a bit long we let these bowls proof and uh, the dough will be ready, we, we stuck on a trace and the dough will be ready when it's three times the size of the beginning. So we have to cover it? Yes, we're gonna put it on a container, on a tray, or we can even leave it on a table, on a bench and cover with something until it proof for three times the size. And then we just need to stretch it and cook. All right, now that the dough is ready, we start stretching. We just need to put a bit of flour on top and cut and now is the time to turn this upside down on the flour so we will expand the flour all the way and we have to turn this one upside down put a bit of flour on top as well flour will be our friends now because it's helping semolina again yeah. semolina yes of course because it's our friend, it's gonna help us not to be sticky. So we're gonna put it as well on the wooden board. And now is the time to start. What I'm gonna do, I need to put it like flour, always, and start as a light massage on the dough. And then we go on the pedal. Again, from here, you're gonna choose the size of the pizza. I want a big one, you can make it big and will be more thin. 
If I want nice and puffy, I make it a bit smaller. Now we just had a tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil on top and we will make a few holes on the dough just to stop the proving into the oven. And now it's time to go into the oven. So what we do now, we just part bake the dough. Because we have a lot of water into our dough, what we will do, we part bake. So we just develop the gluten, we create the gluten, then we take it out from the oven and we finish with the rest of the ingredients. The temperature will be in between the 250 and the 300 degrees because I want to dry out that water from the dough. When the dough starts to be brown, we take it out and we finish with all the toppings. I cook it completely. I didn't pre bake this one because I want an, a nice focaccia. Just put a tiny bit of salt on top, like salt boy. It's time to cut. Oh, look at that. So that's what you want, yeah? Exactly. That's what I want. A nice and puffy hair, about the same time, crispy. Mm. Now we do a classic margarita with this one. You know what's happening right now, Marco? No. This is the most important part of the day. Because so? we get to eat. Oh, which is perfect. That's why I come back into That's... the picture. I can tell already it's tasty. But then let's try it. Mm. Mm. It's a light pizza, Marco. But it's full of taste. But it's full of flavors, yes. But that's what, I, that's what I can't get. It's like so light. How can that be so light? Basically, it's like drinking water. Bigger. It's like drinking water, yeah. Please do a crunch. Mm. Mm. So we can actually bake our pizza base and leave it on a freezer or on a fridge. And tomorrow you can finish with uh, all the ingredients and get into the oven. You're gonna have a nice and fresh product. Looks like it's straight from the oven, even if it's power baked the day before. Last but not least, oh, the focaccia barese, the focaccia from Bari, from Puglia. It's a beautiful focaccia. You can put cherry tomatoes, you can put olives, uh, you can put as many as ingredients as you like. Some people like to put potatoes in the, in the dough, some people don't, like in this recipe. This is a very easy recipe for everyone. So please watch it and learn how to make it and make it yourself. And this can be done in the normal oven. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate. Oh yeah, with Mark's plate today. Mark is gonna show us how to make focaccia pugliese. Okay, today we're using 1.4 kilos of cold water so that we can mix it to a high hydration. We're gonna use 1.6 kilos of zero zero flour with uh, medium protein, which is a W330. And we're gonna mix that with 20% of an integrale flour, which is a wholemeal flour in English. And we're gonna put 3% of salt, which is 60 grams, 2% of extra virgin olive oil, which is 40 grams, and 10 grams of fresh yeast. We're gonna start off with the water, 1.4 kilos. Okay, so we're gonna start with about 10% of the flour, and we're gonna make a bit of a pastella to start off with. So I'm mixing the flour into the water and turning it into a pastella, getting all the grumi out and then we're going to add the flour slowly now. Are you putting more flour, Mark? Yes, we're going to put a little bit more just to make it a little bit thicker. So you want the pastella to be thick? Just um, like a thickened cream con consistency. Okay, so we're using 10 grams of yeast, which is a lot of yeast for two kilos of flour. We're going to mix it in. We're going to break it up so that it mixes better throughout the whole thing. Is it going to be very heavy for you? No, it's not going to be heavy because it's going to be a, it's going to be a short dough. It's going to 
Um, we're going to make the dough, it's going to sit for four hours in a massa and then we're going to roll the balls and then we're going to make the focaccia about four hours later. So it's going to have what, eight hours all together. Okay, so just be patient, keep mixing the flour in. It's going to take about 10 minutes all together to get it all incorporated because it's a high hydration dough. Just a little bit at a time. The wholemeal flour, you can put it, you can mix it with the other flour, it doesn't really matter as long as it's incorporated into your dough. Okay. You're putting some now? I'm putting some now, just to incorporate it into the other flour. The wholemeal flour is going to change the flavour of the dough, the flavour of the focaccia. You're going to make it more rustic? It's going to make it more rustic. It's going to give you a bit more taste in your mouth when you're chewing through it. A bit more texture as well. Tell about this technique. Okay, the technique I'm using is just to go as fast as I can to incorporate the flour, which is going to be 70% hydration. So you have to eventually go very fast. Usually you do this in a dough mixer, but it's quite good to make it at home because you get to feel the, all the dough in your hands. So Mark, the dough is very sticky. It's going to be yeah. a sticky dough because it's a 70% hydration. It's a bit more hydrated than what you'd usually make at home. Yeah. And we're making it by hand, which makes it even stickier. You can put more flour on? You can put a little, little bit more flour. Bit. But at this stage, we're going to incorporate some of the salt. How much it's salt? Six, much? All of the salt. All of that. It's 60 grams of salt, which is 3% of the flour. So, as soon as you've incorporated all the flour in your bowl into the dough, which is about now, you can get rid of the bowl and you can start ah. working on your bench. Now that we've incorporated all the flour, the next process is just mixing it all until we get it to a point where it's not breaking off, which in Italian is called Incordato. Incordato. Yeah. So we're going to add the oil last to give it some elasticity and to incorporate the rest of the dough. Okay, the dough's starting to come together now. You can see if you start pulling it, it's not breaking anymore. How many focaccias can you make with this dough? This one here we can make about three focaccias. How long does the focaccia last? The focaccia will last about three days, even out of the fridge. You don't need to, but in Italy, when you buy a focaccia, they don't use a refrigerated bench, they don't use a heated bench, it's at room temperature. They heat it up if you want it heated up. Otherwise, it just sits there and they'll use it the next day as well. Okay, the difference this flour makes is it's not your usual just white dough, it's a bit more yellow, it's got little bits of fiber in it, it's much healthier for you, it's much easier to digest and it's much better to eat and tastier as well. It's a very versatile flour, you can use it from focaccia to pizza to bread to pastries. So now that we've finished the dough, we're going to put it into a bowl, we're going to put a touch more olive oil on top and then we're going to cover it with cling film, leave it for four hours and then we're going to cut it up into the size balls that we need, which is going to be 600 gram balls. And we're going to roll the balls. Okay, so this is the same dough four hours later. And as you can see, you can see the bubbles all coming up. Okay, we're going to cut some balls. We're going to cut them at around 600 grams. We're going to roll them out. So because it's such a high hydration, we're going to roll it like a mozzarella. We're going to roll the ball using our hand. Because it's a sticky dough, you want to get your fingers underneath the ball and you want to fold the ball into itself. Once you've got your ball, it's going to sit there for another four hours and it'll be ready to stretch. Do you cover it? We are going to cover it, yes. Let's see if we did 600 grand ball. Let's have a look. Oh, very perfection. close. <laughs> so once you've rolled your balls, you can put them in a pizza tray, you cover it, and this is what you get four hours later. 
Okay, we're going to put some oil into the tray, get it nice and oiled, and then we're going to take our pizza ball out of the tray on an, onto a well floured surface. Oh my god, look how soft it is. Such a uh, beautiful you can, soft. You can see the wobble in the dough. Oh wow. It's like a panna cotta. <laughs> it is. A panna cotta dough. Beautiful. Okay, you want to use a lot of flour underneath this because it's such a sticky dough and you just want to press it very lightly out in a circle, just yeah. like that. Wow. Once you've got it about that much, that's enough. You're just going to tap off as much flour as you can and you're going to put it into your tray. All right, so now we're going to add a little bit more oil on top. The oil is just going to make it all smooth and it's going to be part of the flavour. Because in Puglia they make such good oil that you want to eat the focaccia with the oil. It gives the flavour, the right flavour, right? Yeah. We're going to make little indentations now. Just with your fingers? For the, for the oil to sink into. Okay, so we're going to put the cherry tomatoes and you just press them in slightly. 200 grams of tomatoes. So you cut the tomatoes in half? Yeah. Some oregano. You have to be very generous, huh? With the oregano, yeah. Okay, we're going to put some sea salt right at the end. Okay, and there's your product ready for the oven. So no tomato sauce, just cherry tomatoes. Just take yeah. simple ingredients. Yeah. Now we're going to put the focaccia into the oven. The base of our oven is at 310 degrees and the top of the oven is at 250 degrees. Because you want the bottom, because this is such a thick black steel, you want the bottom to be hotter than the top. 12 to 15 minutes in the oven. You don't have to turn it, you don't have to do anything. You just check it. Once you see the colour's perfect, a nice golden brown colour, they should be ready. What pizza are you doing now? Okay, we're just going to stick to the Pugliese style pizza. Pugliese love their melanzane, eggplants, salami, and then we're going to put some stracciatella on it when it comes out. So with the focaccia dough, you can also make a pizza. You can have a focaccia cooked in the pan or a pizza. We're going to give it a check now. We're going to have a look. As you can see, it's a nice golden color. It's risen double the amount of when we put it in. Wow. It's cooked underneath. So I'd say it's ready. Okay, and here we've got the final product. Beautiful. It is nice and crunchy on the outside. Lots of bubbles on the inside. Ready to eat. Okay, and here's the other one ready. Wow. Salami. Egg Salami, eggplants, mozzarella di bufola and a bit of stracciatella on top. Okay, so with this high hydration dough, you can see there's a lot of bubbles. Um, it's soft on the outside, crunchy on the bottom. We've got lots of bubbles throughout the whole pizza. There's a gelatinizzazione of the dough, which makes it look a bit plasticky. And that's the nice, it's like the sourdough. You know what time it is right it's now? It's time. This is the time that I love the most of the video recipe, the time that we eat. Let's and do I it. can't wait to eat. I can eat both of them by myself right now. Because you also use whole meal, it must be lighter, right? It is a lighter dough. And as you can see, because we use the medium, medium strength flour, mm. it was able to hold all the bubbles in yeah. without the dough exploding. And now you're going to be able to taste. Look at that beautiful, beautiful dough. Mmm. 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 Half focaccia, half bread, mm. sorry, yeah. half bread, half pizza. Moist inside, the cherry tomatoes cooked to perfection, the oregano. There's, enough, there's enough of it. There's enough, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Mm. Super crunchy. Wow. This is a culinary experience.
Now I just add a glass of wine. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these videos. Which one is your favorite pizza? And what menu do you want me to create for you? Let me know now. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate.